Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quintic, a quartic, a cubic. We'll see what that looks like. We're going to be solving this equation. Z plus 1 to the fifth power equals Z minus 1 to the fifth power. And I'll be presenting two methods. Actually, there's a third method that I also want to briefly talk about. Maybe I'll mention that at the end. Okay? Great, let's go ahead and start with the first method. My first method is going to be kind of brute forcey. I'll expand everything because why not? We have something called the binomial theorem that gives us z to the fifth plus 5z to the fourth plus 10z cubed plus 10z squared. Notice the symmetry, Pascal's triangle plus 5z plus 1 equals the same thing with the alternating signs that with the plus minus z to the fifth minus 5z to the fourth plus 10z cubed minus 10z squared. I'm writing kind of small because I want to fit everything on one line. And then from here, a lot of terms are going to cancel out. Let's find out. For example, z to the fifth is going to cancel out. And then z cubed is going to cancel out. So that's not going to be cubic. It's actually going to be a quartic equation. And then um, plus, oops, I messed up here because it's supposed to be a plus and this is supposed to be a minus sign. There you go. And the 5z is going to cancel out and we'll end up with z to the fourth z squared and constant and same thing here. But notice that the terms are opposites. So when we bring everything on the right hand side to the left hand side, we're going to get double what's on the left hand side. Makes sense? But then you're going to divide by 2. Okay, anyways, let me not skip steps. Let's put everything on the same side. We're going to get 10z to the fourth plus 20z squared plus 2 equals 0. And then we're going to divide everything by 2. In other words, what's left is on the left. 5z to the fourth plus 10z squared plus 1 equals 0. Awesome. Now, this is quartic, but it can be turned into a quadratic equation because it's kind of biquadratic, which means we can replace z squared with something to make it quadratic. So let's set z squared equal to w. This gives us z squared equals w. That's our formula. We're going to need that later. And this becomes 5w squared plus 10w plus 1 equals 0. This is the easiest type of quartic equation besides w to the fourth equals one, I guess, right? So to solve this problem, we're going to use the quadratic formula because it's not factorable, at least easily. So from here, w is just going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 100 minus 20, which is 80. And then you can just write it as the square root of 80 first and then simplify it. Uh, that's going to be 4 root 5, right? 16 times 5 is 80. And then now we can go ahead and actually divide everything by 2 to simplify this a little bit. It's going to be negative 5 plus minus 2 root 5 divided by 5. And you should be familiar with these numbers if you did a little bit of trigonometry. Okay, I hope you know what I'm talking about. If not, that's perfectly fine because I'm going to mention that in the second method. So these are the W values and they're equal to z squared. You see, that's why it's important to take note of our steps. So we're going to go ahead and set this equal to z squared. And then from here, we need to square root both sides. But remember, a complex number has two square roots. Therefore, it's gonna, this is going to bring in four roots. And uh, it's a quartic, so that's normal, right? The fundamental theorem says you should have four complex solutions. Okay, so suppose we start with the uh, first one, this one. First of all, you kind of have to think about this. Is this a positive quantity or a negative quantity? And it makes a difference because if it's a positive quantity, I'll just take the square roots. But if it's negative, then we're kind of dealing with an imaginary number, right? And as you know, 2 root 5 is the square root of 20 and 5 is the square root of 25. So this is a negative quantity. Great. That's going to give us non-real solutions. Then that's perfectly fine. When you take the square root, you kind of have to do this. You need to put this stuff inside, but you need to negate it to make it positive. In other words, this is kind of like the, the modulus or the absolute value. And then it'll be multiplied by i. When you square this, you're going to get uh, z squared as equal to this number because uh, i squared is negative 1. So it's going to bring the negative that you, you've taken away. Make sense? And of course, uh, there are two numbers whose square equals z squared. And it's uh, basically up to plus minus, right? So we're going to put a little plus minus in there. 
And we're going to do the same thing for the other number, which is minus 5, minus 2 root 5, divided by 5, and this is a very negative number, right? I mean, it's still negative, but this is a minus sign. You put a plus minus sign here. Inside, you're going to have 5 plus 2 root 5, divided by 5, and multiply by i. Make sure you put the i outside, not inside, because it's a different thing when you put it inside, okay? Make sense? So this gives us four solutions, and these are all the roots of our quartic equation. Because z to the fifth cancelled out, this is a quartic equation. And that just brings us to the end of the first method, so don't go away, because we still have the second method, okay? And then we're going to talk about briefly uh, about the third one. So my, for my second method, I want to go ahead and set these equal to each other. Obviously, that's the original problem. And then I'm going to divide both sides by z minus 1 to the fifth. So it's going to look like this. And of course, z should not be 1. And as you know, z equals 1 is not a solution. And now this is equal to 1. And since they both have fifth powers, even with complex non-real numbers, we can do this, right? Is there any exceptions? Anyways, so we got the following. Now, this is really nice because 1 can be complexified. What do I mean by that? I can basically replace 1 with something like this, e to the power 2 pi and i, right? That represents 1 because if you think about it in the argon plane, 2 pi or multiples of 2 pi represent this point, and that's just a real number. And if its uh, modulus is 1, then it's 1, okay? Whatever the modulus is. So, this kind of gives us a good idea, right? So, what is z? Well, first we need to take the fifth root on both sides, and when we do, we're kind of dealing with the fifth roots of unity, right? 1 is unity, so it's going to look like this. e to the power 2 pi ni divided by 5. In the exponential form, taking the fifth root is a piece of cake. Very easy. Now, n is supposed to be 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? Wrong. Let's go ahead and find out. So from here, first of all, if you go ahead and cross multiply or use inf inverse functions, whatever you do, you can basically get an expression for z in terms of um, these exponentials. So it's going to look like this if you do it. I'm going to spare you the trouble and just give you the answer. This is going to be our z. The problem is, if n is equal to 0, we get z equals e to the power 0, which is 1. 1 plus 1 divided by 1 minus 1. Uh-oh, we can't divide by 0. That's not legal, right? So, what is going on here? Let me tell you. If you go back to the original equation and replace n with 0, you're basically going to get the following. It's basically equivalent to removing the fifth power. I know some people are going to say, oh, okay, I'm going to take the fifth root on both sides, and then this is going to be z plus 1 equals z minus 1. z cancels out, 1 equals negative 1. Nonsense, there are no solutions. But that's not the case, obviously, because we do have solutions. But this just means n cannot be 0, it can be anything else. By the way, what is e to the power 2 pi ni over 5? That's basically cosine of 2 pi and uh, n over 5 plus i times sine, so on and so forth. And what is 2 pi over 5 if you replace n with 1? It is 72 degrees. Therefore, it gives us these interesting radicals with square root of 5 and all that stuff. Okay, let's quickly talk about the third method and we'll finish up with that. The third method basically depends on putting everything on the same side in a subtraction way and then using factoring. From here you can subtract the difference of two fifth powers, so on and so forth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.